Hello everybody, how are you? It's Mike Andrew, once again providing a short video with practical insights as it applies to business and leadership. Not too long ago I did a video about how to land that big job, how to effectively interview to increase your chances of getting that promotion or getting hired into a company. Since then I've had a few people say, could you do a similar video but from the perspective of the interviewer? how to effectively interview. And I thought that was a good idea because we're all competent at, at our job, day-to-day -day job. So in, when it comes time to conducting interviews, it's not something that we're used to doing. Now, in my particular role, in roles that I've had in the past, I've had to conduct many executive appointment interviews. And even though I've, I've done a lot of them, I still feel I have a long way to go. And I still work all the time to improve and to be more productive, to allow me and the, the interviewing team to make the best decision, hopefully the right hiring decision or promotion decision. So all I'm going to do is share with you what, I, what, what works for me and how I conduct these interviews. So let me start with number one, the context. Do you understand the context, the nature of the role, so you know what questions to ask to see if this person is a good fit and this person is ready to take on greater scale and scope of the role, if it's a promotion or hiring from the outside, but also to make sure that the person being interviewed understands the context, to see if she know what this role is about so they can ask the right questions and they can make a determination around fit and readiness. Secondly, presence. We always look at executive presence or executive maturity or professional presence. Are they displaying a sense of confidence? Do they, are they acting, because that's important, are they acting like a, a current or future executive? Are they answering questions in a structured, organized, and succinct manner? Really important. When they start going off and answering and taking five minutes to answer a question and then you're not quite understand what they're saying, that, that's a big indicator. Around presence, I always look at, are they, are they asking questions? Are they engaging you as, in, a, uh, in a discussion? Are they asking questions about the role, the company? There's, uh, especially when you're interviewing people at a senior level, I, I'm amazed at how many senior people will sit and answer questions as if you're interviewing them to work at a coffee shop and they won't engage. They won't engage in having a, as, as if you're, you know, engage as if you're a colleague. Engage as if you already have that role. So I look at that. That's a big part of presence for me is their ability to ask questions with confidence, with confidence and to engage in conversations. Three, the CV and resume. It's, it's one of the most important documents each of us can write about ourselves. So when they, when I look at every word, because to me, every word is put there for a reason. And I try to probe deep. I look at their experience and I try to understand their experience. I look at their achievements. And what are their achievements? Sometimes it's highlighted, sometimes it's not. But I try to get at those. And very importantly, what did they do to make that achievement happen? Not just the achievement itself, but what did they do to manage or lead their teams? Really important, that's a good indicator. Oftentimes in a CV, you'll see a category that they'll have a, a summary of their skills or capabilities. And they'll have a number of bullets, and I read those carefully. One of the common ones is, is leadership. They'll say that one of, one of their skills or competencies is leadership. And I like to dig, probe, probe down, probe deeply. And I'll, I'll ask, what do you mean by that? Why do you say leadership is one of your skills? What do you do to demonstrate leadership? And this is where you got to be careful because it's human nature to fall into the trap of things like, well, I like to empower my people and inspire, inspire my people. Or they'll say things like, a leader should, a leader should empower, a leader should delegate. We all know that. We all know that. And that doesn't mean anything. You, you, I, I need specifics. So when they say, I, you know, I like to empower my team, empower my people, I'll say, can you give me an example? How do you empower them? Can you give me an example of what you've done? Because 
saying what, what you should do or what you do means nothing. I need, I need uh, really, really specific, specific examples, not just what they, what they should do, what a leader should do. The next thing I look at is I try to get a realistic sense of their ambition, or is their ambition realistic? And oftentimes I'll get people that say, will say things, and I think they're trying too hard, I want to be a CEO. And I always ask the question, why, why do you want to be a CEO? Because that's good. That's good, but why? And what I find is oftentimes they haven't thought it through. I had one person recently say, uh, I want to be a CEO because I can affect change and make decisions. And my response was, well, do you need to be a CEO to do that? And really, why do you want to be a CEO? Uh, the next thing I look at is, what have you done to develop your people, to build their capability, to get them more ready to grow in their career? Do you have someone ready to take over your role? Because uh, a leader, if, if a manager has not built capability of their people, and, uh, then, then, then what are they doing? The next area comes down to integrity, character, courage. I try to think, have them think of a situation where they made a very sensitive and difficult decision, but it was for the greater good. It was the right thing to do, but it may have had an adverse effect, adverse effect on other people, particularly people that they know well. And that's courage. That's integrity. That's doing the right thing for the greater good of the organization, even though it's not going to satisfy everybody. So I like to get some detail on that. And the next one I mentioned this is questions, asking questions. Are they asking good questions? Are they prepared with questions? Are they listening to the conversation so they can pick up on something to ask questions? That to me, at the more senior you get, the more I feel the having confidence to ask questions is, is an indicator of presence. And finally, here's something that I need to continuously work on and improve. I need to always make sure that I'm listening and do a better job at listening. Sometimes when an answer is lengthy, I, my mind is going somewhere else. And then I get upset at myself and not listening the way I should have. So we have to make sure that we're really listening because when we listen to their answers, you can almost always pick up something they said and get them to explain more, tell me more. You know, uh, those are really good opportunities to deepen and probe with good questions just by listening. Thank you very much for listening, everybody. We'll see you next time.